All right, back to Democracy 24 now. We are just six days away from the first Republican primary debate in Milwaukee, airing, of course, right here on Fox News. And as we count down the days, new Fox News polls show a political outsider gaining ground in the horse race. Let's bring in that candidate. Vivek Ramaswamy is here with us. Vivek, thank you for taking time away from your busy schedule. Uh, I, I know I made a personal request, and I appreciate the fact that you accommodated us. I want to take a look at this new Fox News News polling that just came out. It's got you now in a solid third place, dub, more than doubling your support from back in June. You're now at 11 percent right behind Ron DeSantis. And uh, when asked what your second choice for president would be after Donald Trump, 22 percent of GOP voters now say you. That is up from zero percent five months ago. Now, we have seen candidates surge in the past. Carly Fiorina, Howard Dean come to mind. What are you going to do to keep the Mo going? Look, thank you, John. And you're right. I was polling at 0.0% when we started this race in March. I'm solidly in third, second in some polls heading into the debate next week. The reality is I'm focused on the truth, running to our vision of what it means to be an American. For a long time, the GOP, we've been a party that's running from something. I'm in this race to start leading us to something to our vision of what it even means to be an American today. That's a message that's bigger than me. It's bigger than one man. And I think that's what people are responding to, John. That is also why I think this isn't just a temporary surge. This is just the beginning of what's actually going to change in this race. Well, the challenger to former President Trump so far has, has been Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, uh, and he seems to be concerned that you might replace him in that uh, pecking order. And you've gotten in his head, according to a New York Times report that was out today. The headline says, defend Trump and hammer Ramaswamy. DeSantis allies reveal debate strategy. And the super PAC behind DeSantis lays out four must do's for the governor. And one of them is take a sledgehammer to you. So what's your reaction to that? And uh, how is this going to play out on the debate stage? Well, look, I think the GOP sometimes when you have professional politicians, they use attacks on other candidates as a substitute for a message of their own. I'm in this race focused on the message of my own rather than attacking those other candidates. The truth is I'm an outsider. I'm not a professional politician. I think we have a choice between super PAC puppets who are being propped up with prepped lines and millions of dollars to go along with it versus, in my case, I'm an outsider. I think of myself as a patriot who speaks the truth. And I also think there's a deeper choice in this primary. Do you want incremental reform? I think a lot of establishment politicians can offer incremental reform of the administrative state or declaring independence from our enemies on the global stage, including the likes of China. Do you want incremental reform? Or do you want revolution? And I stand on the side of the American Revolution, those values that set this nation into motion 250 years ago. So I do think that's threatening to a number of other candidates in this race. But the reality is I'm not focused on them. I'm focused on what we actually stand for. And that's how we're going to win this election in a landslide. So, so you had a viral moment earlier this week at the Iowa State Fair uh, when you were approached by a person who described themselves as pansexual asked for your views on same-sex marriage. Now, it was a moment that could have gone wrong in so many different ways. But we want to play this out because this was a moment, I think, that really kind of propelled you forward this week. Listen here. I don't have a negative view of same-sex couples, but I do have a negative view of a tyranny of the minority. So, so I think that in the name of protecting against a tyranny of the majority, and there are times in this country's history where we have had a tyranny of the majority, we have now, in the name of protecting against the tyranny of the majority, created a new tyranny of the minority. And I think that that's wrong. I don't think that somebody who's religious should be forced to officiate a wedding that they disagree with. I don't think somebody who is a woman who's worked really hard for her achievements should be forced to compete against a biological man in a swim competition. I don't think that somebody who's a woman that respects her bodily autonomy and dignity should be forced to change clothes in a locker room with a man. That's not freedom, that's oppression. Part of what makes our country great is that you and I can be civil and have this conversation, and that we live in a country that still gives us, each of us, the right to speak to a presidential candidate and back, and still say that we pledge allegiance to the same nation. So I think that's the beauty of our country, and that's my honest opinion. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for your civility as well. I appreciate it. 
Well, I mean, there you go, a handshake, and you both walked away satisfied. Uh, you, you don't see that too much in American politics because there is an inherent hostility between people who have differing opinions. Now, I imagine that the two of you are never going to see eye to eye, but the, the, the respectful nature of that really was quite extraordinary to watch. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. One of the standards I think we should apply to the next president of the United States, whoever it is, the standard I want the people of this country to hold me to if they elect me to that office is that we should be able to look our kids in the eye. I'm a father of two sons myself. I want to look them in the eye and say, I want you to grow up and be like him, whoever that is in the White House. And so, yes, we can disagree as Americans, but what unites us is that we have the free right to engage in civil open discourse. And what I'll say is I'm not running to lead a political party. That wouldn't be mm. worth it. I am running to lead a nation. And I believe we have perhaps our last best opportunity to reunite this nation. That's what I care about above all else. And I'm going to do it by reviving those ideals that set our country into motion 250 years ago. Our diversity is not our strength. Our strength, John, is what unites us across our diversity. E pluribus unum. From many, one. That's what I'm running to revive. Vivek, before we let you go, you know, you have said that you're not doing much preparation for this debate. Uh, but that New York yeah. Times article shows that DeSantis's PAC has effectively got a, a dossier out on you, uh, giving him plenty of opposition research that they're trying to guide him to bring up during the debate. Are you really not preparing for this debate at all? Well, the truth is, in the seven days leading up to the debate, I'm in eight states. I'm talking to you from California now. I was in Illinois, Michigan, New Hampshire, Iowa. We'll be headed to Atlanta and South Carolina all between now and the period of the debate. So the way I would say it is it's not that I'm pre not preparing for the debate. The way I'm preparing is by talking to voters. That's actually what I think matters more than getting prepped memos from super PAC paid political mm. consultants with pre-prepped robotic attack lines against my opponents. No, that's not how I want to do it. I want to do it by actually talking to voters in this country, having honest conversations, right and left included. I think that's what prepares me not just for the debate, but more importantly, to lead this nation as I expect to do. Uh, we look forward to your appearance uh, next Wednesday, the 23rd in Milwaukee. Thank you for taking time today. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. See you again soon.